Good morning. Welcome back to church. Some of you are thinking, I've been to church every Sunday. Welcome back to church. We're celebrating Back to Church Sunday today, along with thousands of other churches across the nation. And so there's something valuable or good or positive about celebrating with other people, even though we don't, can't see them or don't know them. Um, there's something good about celebrating all at the same time. So we're celebrating uh, back to church, and we're also celebrating the Lord's Supper today. So our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ invites all those who have accepted him as Lord and Savior to share in the feast that he has prepared. So uh, plan to join us after, at the end of our service, for communion. And Aaron has an announcement. Good morning. So with the theme of Back to Church Sunday, we're kind of kicking off a lot of our, our church activities and things, programming that we do. Um, so this coming Wednesday, we are restarting our midweek meal with a message. We're calling that mum wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's the abbreviations. Um, so here's what we, we have going on. Starting at 6 o'clock, we're going to have dinner. I have the sign-up sheet here. It's going to be in the back of the sanctuary on the table. Um, if you could put down, you can sign up for every single week if you know you're going to be here. And that way we have an ac uh, accurate number. Um, so we make sure we have enough food for you. So dinner's at 6. Bible studies will begin at 7 o'clock. Um, there's going to be a kids program um, led by Crystal Urich downstairs, and then there's going to be an adult program um, up here in the sanctuary led by Pastor Jim, uh, Matt McKinley, and myself. Um, it is a, um, a study on core discipleship um, using the um, Great Commission and Great Commandment as a, um, a, a guide of how to... Um, be a good disciple follow christ to follow christ's um, example um, of being a disciple and, and making disciples um, so we would love for you guys to join that program um, so that we can or model not a program a model um, so you can learn more about that so again sign up sheets are in the back and we hope to see you on wednesday thank you aaron what aaron didn't tell you is that he is a trained chef, so he's cooking on Wednesdays, uh, hopefully with some help. But for those of you who didn't know, Aaron is a trained chef, and so the food will be good. So join us for that. Um, were there any other announcements? Dawn has an announcement. Sorry. That's okay. Good morning. I would like to just remind everybody that next Sunday we are going to be starting choir practice. So anybody who would like to join our choir, we would absolutely love to have you. We usually practice Sundays right after church. So please think about it and come sing with us. Thank you, Dawn. Um, so let's prepare our hearts and minds for, oh, there's another one, Kathy. Lunch after church. Join us after church for a lunch downstairs in Fellowship Hall, please. And games? We're going to play games? Wow. That sounds like fun. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Let us be called to worship with these words from the psalmist, Jeremiah and Paul. God sees the hurt of all God's people. Praise the God of our salvation. God wants everyone to be saved. Praise the God of our salvation. God sent Jesus to give himself for all. Praise the God of our salvation. Please join me in singing our opening hymn as we stand together, if able. of our salvation, the one who delivers us from sin. In God's name, I invite you to stand and greet one another. The peace of Christ be with you. In the name of the God of our salvation, peace be with you. All right, our call to confession. God calls each of us to wash ourselves clean so that our transgressions fall away because of his forgiveness. As we confess, God transforms our hearts so that we may cease doing evil, learn to do good, and seek justice. Let us confess together using our prayer of confession. God of our everyday lives, We confess that we find your medicine hard to swallow. The quick fixes of this world are so much more pleasant, leaving us free to go back to our usual routines. But your medicine is powerful, and if we take it, it will remake and renew our lives. It will reorient us to you and to you alone. Turn us towards your love for justice and true worship. Forgive our sins for which you weep. Forgive our hesitation. Grant us courage to choose you as our physician and to serve you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our assurance of forgiveness. The God of our salvation, the God who weeps for us and for our world, desires everyone to be saved. Christ Jesus, a human like us, gave himself as a ransom for all. Through the love of the one God and the one mediator, 
we are forgiven. seated and children and teens it's time for kids rock please follow brian and crystal and everyone else and sing with us. illumination. Prepare our hearts, Lord, as we come before you today, and we pray that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and understanding. Lord, we pray for illumination of your word and that you would open our eyes to the truth of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and the great sacrifice he made for us at Calvary. Guide us, Lord, in the direction you would have us go. Give us the grace to love you more and serve you better in the place where you have placed us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 11 to 14. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me where you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Simple faith and simple truth. Simply put, this is what God wants for every one of us. 
In fact, this is a common theme throughout both the Old Testament and the New Testament. So why is this a general and a big picture theme for God's word, do you suppose? Because this is how God works in our lives and he has chosen to give us a simple faith connected to a simple truth. Today we are marking and celebrating this gift from God by gathering together in worship. This Back to Church Sunday has been celebrated in our nation since 2009. If you have missed the message of Back to Church, it is simply put an opportunity to come to your worship, back to your fellowship, back to your small group discussion, back to your faith, back to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Simply put, this is your opportunity to come back to your church family. And whether you are a first-time visitor here, or online, or by video, or you have been a member of this church for your entire life, today you are part of this body of Christ. Because of this simple faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, there is an exciting bonus for everyone hearing my voice. God is giving you and I both a hope and a future. So let's all stand together as we read about this gift in Paul's letter to Timothy. This is from 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 7. Read this with me, please. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. And for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying and a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. May God bless our hearing of his word this day. Please be seated. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A simple faith and a simple truth is exactly what the Apostle Paul is describing for Timothy in this passage. Specifically, Paul is describing this for the church in Ephesus, and he wants Timothy to preach it, to promote it, and to pass it on to them. Considering Paul's words right in the first verse we read, there is a call to prayer for everyone. For everyone to pray, and for everyone praying to pray for everyone. The result is so that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness, to use Paul's words. Wow. All godliness and holiness peace and quiet. How many of you can say that you live a peaceful and quiet life every day? Nobody, not me either. In worship, she said yes. <laughs> in worship, we pass the peace of Jesus Christ. And that's always a good start toward a peaceful and quiet life, right? It's a gift and we should share it But what is the peace of Jesus Christ exactly? 
The peace of Christ is the peace that passes the world's understanding, according to Scripture. Therefore, the peace and quiet of Christ is not a trouble-free peace or a sleepy, dormant, quiet, or a stormless skies kind of peace. It's not that. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. A church leader and archbishop once described the peace and quiet of Jesus better than most that I've heard by saying the, this, the life of a Christian ought to be like the ocean, with the surface constantly battered about by storms. But miles and miles below the surface, a deep peace and an unmoved tranquility. Don't you love that description? I want that in my life, right? A deep peace and an unmovable or unmoved tranquility. Not a trouble-free peace and quiet, but a trouble-transcending peace and quiet. This is the simple faith and truth that the apostle was relaying to Timothy and to us. This peaceful and quiet life that is godly and holy gives us a solid hope, solid and a wonderful future. The faith is in Jesus Christ and the truth comes through and from Christ alone. One more way of looking at peace in this world and then we will move on. I promise. There's a phrase making the, the rounds lately on t-shirts and, and bumper stickers that says, peace starts with a smile. Ever seen that phrase? Now that's not a bad start at all, but it's not good enough for the peace that God is talking about. True peace starts with a footstep a stride forward into God's hope and God's future. That's where it starts. So let, let me mention to you that I would say from my observance and my experience in this life and in this world, that people are not just looking to keep disruptions and disturbances, excitement of certain kinds, of the negative kind, away from their lives. That's what people want, right? They are looking to find something positive. They are searching in life for some peace and quiet, or if quiet is too much to ask, just some peace. After all, aren't we living in a TGIF world? And I'm not talking about, thank God it's Friday, although lots of us feel that way week to week. I'm talking about TGIF, Twitter, Google, iPhone, and Facebook, right? We live in a TGIF world. It's here. It's all around us. It seems to capture our attention and create stress, pressure, and not the peace of Christ in our lives, right? Now, those things can be used for good things. Those things can be beneficial. But they don't create peace. They don't create the peace of Christ. The Russian Orthodox Church introduced a word which is now popular in a variety of Christian groups. The Russian word is pustinia. Pustinia. And it refers to a remote cabin or place for prayer. Even a hermit's hut in the woods where you can encounter God in silence, serenity, and peace. Who doesn't want one of these pustinias, right? Who doesn't want that, that kind of place? But of course we want it with bath and shower, of course. With hot meals available every day cooked by someone else. Of course, with the possibility of walking around on flower-lined pathways, maintained, of course, by someone else, where you can attend worship presided over by someone else, of course. 
The truth is that it is doubtful you'll find that kind of peace and quiet of Pustinia in a sterile hotel room or up in the mountains, surrounded by the sounds of hundreds of other people, guests, electronics, elevators, street noises, and airplanes outside your door. Or on the screen of your favorite Google or YouTube device. But the quest for somewhere and something that offers Pustinia, that offers peace and quiet on demand, is a simple faith and a simple truth. And it includes a hope, the hope, and a future. It is truly a gift from God that only needs to be received by each one of us. And it is available even in our TGIF world. I think I've made my point. And most of you seem to agree with my assessment of our world, at least partially, right? But let me ask one more question. When you made your summer vacation plans, how important was it, wherever you were headed, that there was Wi-Fi available? Was that important at all? Some of us will admit that, others of us not. Maybe it wasn't important. And did you realize that a drop cell phone connection is now the direct cause of spikes in blood pressure? It's been proven. A dropped cell phone connection increases your blood pressure. Enough said. We're not going to give up our cell phones or our Google account or our fascinations with technology anytime soon. And I don't expect you to. However, there is a better way to receive true peace and quiet for our lives and the lives of all those around us. Since we agree that the most endangered gift the 20th first century is taking away is the existence of peace and quiet, let's focus on the solution for us as Christ followers. It's precisely this promise of peace and quiet that the pastoral letter of 1 Timothy promises us. That's what Paul is saying. God is telling us that if we follow Jesus Christ, we will find a way to lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and holiness. Simple faith and simple truth means clear hope and a solid future. So let's use an analogy to help us better understand this today as followers of Christ. Although some of you may not even know some of the types of music that I'm about to mention, you can definitely understand this this analogy. Every generation, since the beginning of time, hates the music of the generation that comes after them. Would you agree with that? It's been proven, so whether you agree or not, it's true. (laughs) This has been true for a long, long time, as I said. The Gilded Era hated the emergence of jazz. The Jazz Era hated the emergence of swing. The big bands hated the emergence of beat. The beatniks hated the rock and rollers. Next. The rockers hated disco. And disco despised heavy metal, and metalheads hated grunge. Grunge hated rap. I'm not done yet. (laughs) Rap hated High School Musical. Now I'm done. (laughs) In music and in our culture, every new entry was deemed worthless noise, without soul, without heart, without depth. Maybe some of us have said those words in criticism. Yet within two generations of any of those times, Each noise becomes classic, right? You've seen it happen. Each noise, each worthless noise becomes classic. With all the changing sounds around us and our changing opinions of music and culture, is it any wonder that we are all searching for someone or something who does not change and never hurts our ears 
or leaves us or abandons us. As the, as the pastoral letter from Paul to first, in 1 first Timothy expresses it, we are all searching for a quiet and peaceful life from our God who wants us all to be saved. In the first century, the noise intruding on Christian life of peace and quiet came from a world where the belief in one God was an aberration and was just wrong and where prayers offered for everyone were unheard of. The peace and quiet those Christians sought was the peace to practice their religion, the quiet of their services and prayers uninterrupted by the Roman authorities. That's what they wanted. That's what they were seeking. This morning, while you have your cell phone on vibrate or are quietly texting your friends, it might be good to remember that one of the first qualities of the church, Big C Church, that they recognized as aiding a Christian life, guess what it was? The sound of silence. Silence. The early church knew that. That's what they needed. Some early Christians did crazy things because of that, like live in caves or on the top of pillars or on a mountaintop plateau in the desert to find the peace of silence. Later, when the church developed a monastic order, one of the most regimented and regular practices was to live a life devoted to silence, believe it or not. Try that sometime. Have you ever been to a Trappist monastery? Monastery? I would think nobody here has, nor have I, but I've read about them. Even if the necessary duties of maintaining the monastery or the nunnery required spoken communication at times, there was always a structured time of silence worked into every day. Not just once a week, every day. When was the last time you had a complete hour of silence? We have trouble with two minutes of silence. <laughs> Sleep doesn't count, by the way. Friends, with all the sirens and clamoring enticements for striking it rich, becoming famous, making a name for yourself, a disciple of Jesus looks forward to a true peace and true quiet that comes from a simple faith and a simple truth. In fact, today's First Timothy text calls us to quest after a life of peace and quiet. Quest after his hope and his future already planned for you and I. But not so that we can shut down and shut out the rest of the world. We have to live in it. The peace and quiet we find in Christ is the offering of a vision of true hope and future, which Jeremiah spoke of in our Old Testament reading today, when he said, God says, I know the plans I have for you, plans not to harm you, but for a hope and a future I'm giving you. This peace and quiet and hope and future are for all those who are without the presence of the greatest peacemaker and quiet in their lives, which includes all of us. A Christian's hope and future is not a dead end or an end in itself even. It is the means to an expanding vision for life and the world. We need to keep moving toward that. The biblical understanding of peace and quiet is the sure faith which salvation brings to our lives here on earth and into all of eternity. Here are Paul's newly translated words in Philippians 4, 8 and 9. Whatever things are true, whatever honorable, whatever making for the right, whatever lovable, whatever admirable, if there is any virtue, anything of high esteem, think on these things. And all you have learned, have taken from tradition, have listened to, have observed in me, Act on these, and the God who brings peace will be yours. True peace starts with a step toward 
and into God's future for you. For God knows the plans he has for you, plans to prosper, not harm, plans to give you hope and a future. Or as Dante put it in one of the greatest quotes in the history of literature, that's my opinion, he said, in his will is our peace. In his will is our peace. Know this and be at peace. Amen. In our prayer time today, we want to express any of those joys or concerns that are on our hearts and minds today. Somebody took it. Would you like to use mine? Take one of those. Yeah. We got it. Prayers of thanks, prayers requests, prayers of peace, prayers of faith. Anyone? Ed. I'm just very thankful that I have my son and daughter here today, and they're both healthy. Thanks be to God. I would like to lift up Mike Pasquinelli. Um, Mike is um, experiencing some throat issues, and um, so prayers for his recovery and that it's nothing more serious. Anyone else? All right. Let's take our prayers to God. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for being present in our lives. We thank you that we can gather and worship together as friends, as members of this body of Christ, as part of your family. We thank you that you have given us so much in this life, including peace and quiet with our simple faith and the simple truth that comes from Jesus Christ. We thank you that your love surrounds us each day, and today we lift up those people and places and circumstances on our hearts and minds that only you can solve and that um, you are sovereign over. We lift up joy that family members can join together in worship in a healthy way and remain healthy in this world. We, we, express, um, we express our prayers of request for recovery from illness, recovery from a throat issue, recovery from COVID, and any of those other health issues that challenge us day to day. We lift up all of those people in your name, for you are the great physician. Heal them, strengthen them, Motivate them to spread the good news of the gospel with the gifts that you've given them. Lord God, we lift up this church family and all churches across the United States today that are celebrating Back to Church Sunday. We ask your blessing on the visitors, on the friends, on the members, on the attendees in worship this day, that your Holy Spirit would enter their hearts and minds, and would strengthen them for your work in this world. We ask your blessing upon the celebration of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper this day, wherever it happens, that your Holy Spirit would be present and that all would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because of what he has done on the cross. As he shares his blood and body with us, May we be prepared and may we be 
uh, united in your Holy Spirit to spread peace and quiet across the world or across the street. Wherever you have placed us, give us the gifts to do your work. And Lord God, today we lift up all of these prayers in our hearts and minds, both spoken and unspoken, in the strong name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who has taught us to pray, saying these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand if you're able and join me in stating what we believe. This is a statement of faith for National Back to Church Sunday. We believe that there is one God eternally existing in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is God the Son and is true God and true man. Jesus Christ was begotten by the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin, led a sinless life, took on himself all our sins, died on the cross, and rose again. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father as our mediator and advocate. The Bible is God's word uniquely and fully inspired by the Holy Spirit and is authoritative on all matters on which it speaks. All people sin and fall short of the glory of God and will face eternal separation from God unless they come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Salvation is a free gift from God that can only be received by faith in Jesus Christ. God works through the members of his church to evangelize the lost and teach believers to obey his commands. Churches are to be open to and accepting of all people, offering God's love and redemption to each person without prejudice or condemnation. However, in their efforts to reach out, churches must take care to uphold the word of God and not engage in moral compromise or affirm any sins such as sexual immorality, idolatry, adultery, homosexuality, stealing, greed, drunkenness, slander, swindling, murder, strife, deceit, malice, gossip, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, factions, or envy. God's people are called to holiness in all aspects of life with the goal of being conformed to the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God, the gifts of God for the people of God. We know that people will come from north and south and east and west to sit at table in God's kingdom. We also know from scripture that Jesus' closest friends, his disciples, did not recognize him when he reappeared to them. It was only after he took bread and shared the cup that their eyes were opened and they saw who he is. May our eyes be opened this day to the presence of the living Lord. So just as Jesus Christ offered his thankful praise to God, we should offer our thankful praise as well. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Would you please pray with me? Lord God, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. You are eternal God, our creator. You have given us life and second birth in your spirit. Once we were no people, but now we are your people. You claimed Israel as your chosen nation and raised up the church as a witness to the resurrection, breathing into it your life and power. From worlds apart, you gathered us together. When we go astray, you welcome us home. Always, your love has been steadfast. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In love with you and in compassion for all, Jesus healed and taught. He challenged and comforted. He welcomed and saved. Jesus trusted his life to you and went freely to his death so the world might be set free from suffering and sin. You raised him from death and raise us also to live a new life with him. In the power of the Holy Spirit, you send us out to make disciples as he commanded. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. O God, today you have called us together to be the church. Unite us now at your table and in one loaf and a common cup, make us one in Christ Jesus. Let your spirit empower the life we share and ignite our witness in this world. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forevermore. Amen. Our Lord and Savior, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had given thanks to God, he broke it, saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. 
Those who are with me will never hunger. Those who believe in me will never thirst. The body of Christ given for you. In the same manner, our Lord and Savior took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink all of it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink from this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand if you're able and join me in the prayer after communion. God of all times and places, as we leave this place of worship, Help us to know that there is no place we might go that separate us from you. With this sure knowledge, give us spirit-inspired courage and imagination to discern faithful ways of responding to every person we will meet this week and to every situation we will encounter. May our Lenten vows of faithfulness lead us to joyful obedience all week long. 
In Jesus we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, Mother Teresa said this about our giving. It's not how much we give, but how much love we put into giving. And Jesus tells us God loves a cheerful giver. Please prayerfully give from God, from what God has given you today, tomorrow, and always, because he is always constant. So join me in dedicating our, all of our giving with prayer. Gracious God of our lives, we bring you gifts from what you have blessed our lives with. May these gifts be used by you in your work in this world, whether it is across the world or across the street. May these gifts work in hearts and minds so that all would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Bless the giver and receiver that we would be strengthened to make disciples of all nations. And Lord God, we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand if you're able and join me in singing our closing hymn, Weave a Story to Tell the Nations. Remember, you're all invited downstairs for a lunch today, celebrating Back to Church Sunday, so please join us downstairs. And please listen to this final blessing and benediction by the VPC Choir. <laughs> 